People first entered space in 1961. The 1960s and 70s saw lots of missions to the moon. After that, humans only travelled to space stations in orbit around the Earth. The most well-known is the International Space Station, or ISS. Someone has been on board the station every day since it first became habitable in 2000. But our bodies are made to live in space. We evolved on Earth and adapted to the conditions on our planet. Being exposed to very different environments can badly affect our health, and space is one of the most dangerous places for humans. This is why astronauts on the ISS will usually spend around six months to a year in orbit. But to explore the solar system more, we must understand how our bodies change when we're away from Earth. Risks of takeoff and re-entry. To get into space, we use rockets. The large acceleration is measured in G-force. 1G is the acceleration caused by Earth's gravity. Everything on Earth feels this force when they are resting, like a person sitting or standing completely still. Astronauts usually experience up to three times this amount when taking off or re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. Before spacecraft design improved, past astronauts used to feel double that at around 6G. This can make their bodies feel heavy, like a big weight is pressing down on them. It also makes blood flow away from their brain and eyes, which can cause a short loss of consciousness and vision. To stop this happening, astronauts train to withstand large G-forces and cope with the effects. They also wear spacesuits that squeeze the body to limit how much blood flows away from the head during the flight. Another risk to think about is the extreme heat and pressure the rocket will feel. During takeoff, the blasts from the rocket's engines can damage other parts of the craft and cause fires. The rocket's fast speed also creates heat as it crashes with air molecules. This is a big risk during re-entry. The increasing rocket speed and atmosphere density means more air molecules are hit every second. This leads to more friction and heat. That's why a heat-proof shield is so important on spacecraft. The angles the rocket travels through for launch and re-entry are also carefully calculated, putting the rocket on the best path to stop overheating. Risks of the space environment Being in space isn't like being on Earth. The biggest difference is the lack of air. Life support systems in spacesuits and spacecraft supply oxygen instead and take out carbon dioxide. This allows astronauts to breathe safely. The lack of air means space is an almost perfect vacuum with very low pressure. On board the ISS, the air is Earth-like and has around 80% nitrogen. The pressure is similar to being at sea level on Earth, but spacesuits only supply pure oxygen. The pressure is a third of what we feel on Earth. Movement is easier, but astronauts could suffer from decompression sickness if in spacesuits for a long time. The lower pressure can cause gases leaving the body to form bubbles. These can then travel around the body. This is painful if bubbles end up in joints like the knees or elbows. More seriously, the bubbles can block blood vessels and cut off blood supply to organs like the heart and brain. To stop this, astronauts must prepare before they put on spacesuits. They breathe pure oxygen for a while in a place where the external pressure is more normal. Nitrogen slowly leaves the body. This lowers the chances of bubbles forming. Astronauts do this on Earth before launch. The same process happens for the return journey, but takes place on the ISS instead. Astronauts who go on spacewalks outside the ISS also need to do this. Spacesuits and spacecraft give extra protection as well. The temperatures in space are extreme, freezing in the shade, but really hot in the sun. Heating and cooling systems keep temperatures comfortable for them. The white color of spacesuits and spacecraft also reflects heat and insulation helps combat the cold. The multi-layer insulation, or MLI, blankets also shield against micrometeoroids. These tiny bits of rock and metal travel fast enough to damage equipment, systems, and even spacesuits. MLI blankets act like sponges to take hits, and they also provide some protection against radiation. Radiation in space is more dangerous than on Earth. It's mostly made of high-energy particles, such as cosmic rays and plasma from the surface of the sun. Earth's atmosphere and magnetic field stop many particles from hitting the surface. Outside this protective layer, astronauts are exposed to more radiation at higher energy. This creates a lot of risks. It can cause radiation sickness, damaging cells in the body. DNA can be changed, leading to mutations that can turn into cancer. It may even damage the brain, which could affect its function and increase the chances of developing Alzheimer's disease. Radiation levels on spacecraft are closely checked to make sure that the shielding works well. 
Scientists are also researching which materials shield better against radiation. They're also studying if medicine can help our bodies repair damage caused by radiation. Risks of being away from Earth A major risk of any space mission is that the astronauts are not nearby. If they get sick or injured, there's no access to doctors and hospitals. Some medicines might not be available. Medical supplies on board must be carefully managed so they don't run out. Equipment needs to be maintained so it doesn't break. It's not easy to send extra supplies. The ISS, which is in low Earth orbit, only gets a restock every two to three months. If astronauts travelled further away, they'd have to wait even longer for supplies. The distance also affects contact with Earth. Currently, people on the ISS can speak with ground crew and not notice any delay. It takes less than a second to send signals. This lets experts on Earth speak with astronauts and help them solve problems or guide them quickly, like teaching them how to use onboard medical equipment. But anywhere further from Earth, we won't be able to communicate in real time. Any missions to Mars could face delays of up to 40 minutes between messages when the planet is at the furthest point away in its orbit. Astronauts prepare for emergencies by completing drills. They practice what to do just in case something bad happens. These drills happen in teams, the same teams who go into space together. Each astronaut is chosen based on their skills and how they add to the group. It's important that they can work well together, not only for the safety of the mission, but for their well-being. Spacecraft are small, and crews spend a long time living there together. They don't have home comforts or regular contact with friends and family. They can suffer from a lack of sleep because there's no regular day and night cycle. Each day, the ISS orbits the Earth 16 times. That's 16 sunrises and sunsets. It's very noisy too. Machines run all the time, such as the fans are needed to circulate the air. In such a potentially stressful environment, the team must support and rely on each other. The small size of any spacecraft is also a health risk. Illnesses can quickly spread in such a small area while, worryingly, Astronauts' immune systems get weaker in space. Scientists don't fully understand why this happens. They collect blood and saliva samples from astronauts to look at changes in the immune system. Before a mission launches, astronauts are put in quarantine. This reduces the chance of them getting sick and passing it on to others. Surfaces and air filters on the ISS are also cleaned often, and water is treated to prevent illnesses. Different areas of the station are swabbed and checked for microbes, as well as the astronauts themselves risks of microgravity. You may not feel gravity pulling you down, but the force is always there. Our bodies have evolved to work in Earth's gravitational field. The Moon and planets like Mars have weaker gravity compared to our own. On the ISS, it's about 10% less than on the surface of Earth, but the astronauts on board the ISS feel weightless. This is due to the orbit of the space station. Earth's gravity pulls it down, but it moves fast enough to just keep missing the Earth. The ISS and the astronauts living there are in constant freefall. Their acceleration is zero G, so they live in a microgravity environment. This leads to about half of the astronauts experiencing space motion sickness when they first arrive at the ISS. When they move, they see themselves and their surroundings shifting, but they don't feel their movements because they're weightless. This can cause nausea, vomiting, and fatigue. Luckily, these symptoms usually go away within a few days once their bodies have adjusted to the strange surroundings. But microgravity has more serious long-term effects, like losing bone density and muscle mass. Being weightless means your body isn't working against gravity. Every time you move on Earth, a force pulls against you. This workout doesn't happen when you're floating in the air. Bones and muscles don't need to use the same strength, so they weaken. Around 1% of bone mass is lost every month, and bones are more likely to break. Calcium released from bone loss can also cause kidney stones. For muscles, the fibres get smaller. Astronauts can lose up to 20% of muscle mass during their first two weeks in a weightless environment. Tendons become stiffer too. This means weaker muscle strength and muscles that tire more easily. Some astronauts have muscle soreness even months after coming back to Earth. Exercise can reduce how much bone density and muscle mass is lost. Astronauts will train for a few hours each day. Aerobic exercises like cycling or running on a treadmill are best for bones. Bungee cords keep them attached to the equipment. Weightlifting exercises are best for muscles, but they must use all different areas of muscles. Microgravity also affects the movement of fluids in the body. On Earth, fluids get pulled into the lower body. But in space, water and other fluids move upwards into the head. This increased pressure causes headaches, face puffiness, earaches and vision problems. 
The movement of fluid upwards in the body causes problems and tricks the body into thinking that we have too much blood. There's never usually so much fluid in our top half. Blood vessels even have to expand. In response, up to 15% of fluids are removed into body tissue and cells. Red blood cell production also goes down, which can cause anemia once astronauts land back on Earth. And having less blood to pump means the heart doesn't work as hard. Like other muscles, it can become weaker as a result. This can lower blood pressure, and once on Earth again, some astronauts end up fainting whenever they stand up until their bodies readjust to gravity again. To reduce this risk, and the chances of being dehydrated on return, astronauts drink a special electrolyte formula of water and salts. The drink increases the amount of fluid in their body. Conclusion Why should we explore space? There are many challenges in getting to space and surviving there. Astronauts train and prepare for years before their first mission, and they always learn and update their skills throughout their careers. There are risks we know of, and risks we still need to understand more. But the rewards can be huge. We get to study our planet and solar system in unseen ways, learning about our place in the universe. Countries around the world, and people from all backgrounds, work together to push space exploration further. New technology has been created, benefiting our everyday lives. Different areas of science progress, expanding our knowledge. We get closer and closer to answering some of our biggest questions. Are we alone in the universe? What else is out there? It is in our nature to be curious about the world around us. As long as people have that curiosity, we must also do our best to protect them and keep them exploring as safely as possible.